So next topic of conversation is infrastructure as a service. So what is infrastructure as a service? You know, we last time we drew our diagram in my awesome diagramming skills that we have here. You know, we got a couple of desktops, let's throw a laptop in over there. That's not my laptop because it doesn't look like, like it work very well. And then we had our server. Right, we connected all those together. And we talked about um, that everybody has the same basic kind of applications on their server. We got email, we've got uh, files stored out there, and everybody's got a line of business application. That's the, you know, it's kind of the main one that they, they run their whole business with. Uh, you know, we've seen these all the way from you know, doctors with a program like Medical Manager. Um, we've got financial places that use uh, NetX Pro. We've got everything under the sun. Uh, landscapers use a, a program called Boss. All kinds of different line of business applications. Every industry has one that's written towards them. And then we, you know, the evolution, we put on, we got ended up with a firewall in here. This time my firewall is bright red, it works much better because we're connected to the internet. Well, so the question then becomes is sometimes we can't move email offsite and do it as software as a service. Sometimes we can't move our line of business offsite because the software is not ready, it hasn't been. Uh, set up correctly by the software programming guys. They're probably going to move to a cloud-based model, but they're not ready for it yet. And sometimes they're married together so integrally that they depend on each other and you can't separate them out in order for it to happen. That's what a lot of people have done is they've taken the entire server and they've moved the entire server out into the cloud. And we just get rid of it out of the network here. We don't even need it. We move, we move the entire server out there and. Do we really need desktops over here anymore? I don't know. I mean, we need to be able to access the server up here. So yeah, we could leave some desktops in place and we'll leave some, some laptops in place, but we can also add in a, it's not a new type of device, but a lot of people haven't seen it before, and we call it a, a thin client. It's a little bitty device. It's not a computer. All it can do is turn on and go look for and connect to the server out there. So then these thin clients, are far less expensive, usually 50% cheaper than a desktop, maybe 60, 70% cheaper than a laptop. They're easier to take care of because with the thin client, there's nothing people can break. If it stops working, you throw it away and go buy a new one. And then the thin clients, there's no software they can corrupt. If it gets stalled, you push the power button, you reset it, you turn it back on, and when it comes back up, it goes out and connects to the server again. So the thin clients are a much better solution. They also use 12 watts of electricity versus 200 and 300 watts of electricity. Your power bills. So one of the big benefits of this infrastructure as a service is what if your office is expanding and you've got additional locations? You know, you, are you going to build a data center and a server infrastructure in every location? Probably not feasible. Are you going to set up firewalls and VPN them all together and, and have your traffic route that way? Yeah, that's the way you used to do it. But the connectivity between locations can get really expensive. If you put everything out in the cloud, all you have to do then is make sure all your new offices have a firewall in place, can get good quality internet access, and you can scale your entire infrastructure here as fast as you need it to do, as many locations as you need to open up, it can keep up with you. It's, it's created this way to be massively scalable, and you don't have to worry about whether or not your data center, your data room can grow as fast as the company. Uh, infrastructure service can help you from a disaster recovery point of view too because let's say that at your office there's a fire. You know, I hope it never happens to you, but if it does, you're going to lose all the desktops that were at that location. You're going to lose your, all your files and everything. If your server was there, you just lost your server. Did you have your data backed up off-site? How recent was your data backed up off-site? You have to worry about all those sorts of things. If your server is out in the cloud, all you have to do to recover from a disaster recovery, roll down to your local computer store, get some new computers, get them connected to the internet, could be in your garage on a wireless connection if you needed to, and all they got to do is get back to the server out here in the cloud. You know, disaster recovery is one thing, but what about just everyday backups? Everyday backups are a lot easier because, again, the cloud is designed to do this sort of stuff. So because it's in a massively scalable data center, 
you can just take snapshots and images of your server. They're going to move it somewhere else in the data center. They probably have another data center that you can back it up between the two of those centers. And you don't have to worry about it. Somebody else is taking care of it for you. There's no management on your part. There's no worrying about it. There's no swapping out external hard drives to make sure the stuff's off-site. It just happens. So another key feature of the infrastructure as a service is flexibility. So we hire a couple more guys. You know, we talked about this earlier. We just put on a couple more devices here. Wow, that was the worst device ever, I think. And we get them connected, and they hit the server, and everything's good. We don't have to worry about more software licenses. Did we buy, you know, maybe did we buy Microsoft Office for them? Um, we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because we have the flexibility built into the server. It's literally just turning it up and adding a couple more people. You know, and, and flexibility can get even more dramatic than that because a lot of our small businesses, uh, their lease will come up and they found a great deal on a bigger space someplace else, so they're going to move. Moving before was a huge hassle because we had to worry about the server and IP addresses and did we get everything shifted. With uh, the infrastructure as a service and the server out in the cloud, it's not that big a deal. We literally can just go in, pick up all the computers, buy a different internet connection at the new office, put our firewall back in place, and plug everything back in with all of our thin clients and desktops and laptops. Does not matter where the office is located at at all because all we need is a high-speed internet connection and everything just works.